Welcome back to part 5 of the top-down tank battle tutorial in Godot 3.0. This time we're going to make the enemy tanks shoot and we're also going to improve the enemy tank movement a little bit. Alright, let's get started. So to start we have a couple things to clean up on the enemy tanks. One thing that I forgot about last time was, you know, so say this tank here, I have the detect radius set to 500, but when I run the scene it's still a very small circle. And the reason for that is our enemy tank, if we go over to enemy tank scene, is us using a circle collision shape for the detect radius. And then the code is setting the radius. But the problem is because we created that shape in the scene and then instanced multiple copies of that scene, they're using the same shared collision shape. So every enemy tank will have the same exact collision shape. And if you change the radius on one, it changes it on all of them. So instead, what we're going to do here is I'm going to set this to back to null. I'm going to clear out the shape and leave the shape undefined. And then in the script, what we're going to do is in the ready, we're going to make a new circle shape when we initialize the tank. So then we set our detect radius, collision shapes, shape equal to the circle, and then we set the shape radius like we did there. And that way we will have what we want, which is a big circle for that guy and a smaller circle for that guy, whatever we set. So now I've gone ahead and made an enemy bullet scene, extending the base bullet scene just like we did with the player and I've chosen a sprite for it and given, given it a collision shape and we're going to use that to make the enemy tanks fire. So we need to add that to the enemy tanks bullet parameter and then we'll jump into the script. So what we want is the enemy tank to fire but only when it is pointing at least in the general direction of the player. I don't want the tank firing you know, in the opposite direction from where the player is. So we want to know if the angle between the enemy tank's turret and the player's position is less than a certain number of degrees and we can adjust that to give the tank more or less accuracy. So in our process function we already have a unit vector pointing towards the target and we have a unit vector of our current direction of our turret. And so to find the angle between them, we can just use the dot product. So if target direction dot current direction. And so that will give us a value. And if you're not familiar with dot product, what I recommend you do is go over to the Godot official documentation. Under the tutorials math section, there's a document on vector math. And if you go down to the dot product section, it tells you a little bit about what the dot product is. And for our purposes, what we need to know is that when you have two vectors and you take their dot product, if the dot product comes out to be zero, then they are exactly 90 degrees apart. If the number is less than zero, then it's going to be greater than 90 degrees. And if the number is greater than zero, then it's less than 90 degrees. And because they're unit vectors, then that value is going to be between zero, or I'm sorry, between one if they're pointing the exact same direction and negative one if they're pointing, you know, exactly in the opposite direction. So we want a number that is close to one. And that will mean we're, that we're nearly pointing in the same direction. So I'm going to try this and we're going to, we can experiment. I'm going to try this with 0 0.9 and see how that works. And then we can adjust it if we want to make it different. And we'll make it a, probably make it a parameter, but I just want to try it out. Then we're going to call our shoot function, which we already defined in the tank script. right? And that's going to emit a signal with our bullet. So just like we did with the player, we just need to connect that signal of our enemy tank to the function in main to handle the bullet. So we go to our enemy tank, and we connect its shoot function. And we're going to connect it in map to tank shoot is what we named it, not enemy tank shoot, because we're using the same function for all of them. And I'm going to do the same thing with the second enemy tank.
So let's try it out and see if our enemies are shooting at us. Go over here and get inside the radius. Yeah, there we go. And so see when the turret is pointing in the general direction of my player, it fires. But if I'm far away, then it doesn't. Okay. So that's pretty good. Now the next thing I wanted to do something about was that that you just saw there. When we get in front of the enemy tank, you know, it kind of pushes the player out of the way, which is a little bit ugly because if you're at an angle or something, you get that snapping, right? So instead, let's make our enemy tanks not quite so dumb. And if they see something in front of them, they are going to hit the brakes and you know, shoot at it, keep shooting at it, but they're going to hit the brakes. And then if nothing's in front of them, they'll resume movement. So we're going to do that by adding a raycast to the enemy tank. So I'm going to add a raycast 2D. And I'm going to call this look ahead. And I want this to be pointing in front of the player, out in front of it. So I'm going to enable the Raycast. Very important. A lot of people forget to do this when they first add a Raycast 2D node. Enable is off by default. So if you're wondering why your Raycast isn't working, that's probably why. The Cast 2, we want to set it to look ahead of the player. So I'm going to try, let's say 100, let's say 100 pixels. Right, so there we see I'll zoom in here, and there, there we see our Raycast sticking ahead. So if this contacts something, that's how we're going to know that we want to slam on the brakes. Now, the thing is, this also means I want to be able to adjust my speed. I want it to slow down and speed up. So instead of this constant value that we've set here for speed, where it always moves at the exact same speed, in the tank source script, I'm going to change this to and call this max speed. And then we will adjust that with a local speed variable that can change over time as we're accelerating or decelerating. So now if you save that, don't forget to go back over to your uh, various tanks and set their properties again because we've changed the name of the property. It no longer has the value in there. Now over on the player script, we need to change this and we're just going to stick to max speed here we'll worry about player acceleration and deceleration maybe later but that should be all we need to do there now on the enemy tank we're going to add a local variable here called speed and that's going to be whatever our current speed is and in the process function or sorry in the control function when we're this is where we're detecting and moving along the path. We're going to check the look ahead. So if look ahead is colliding, then that means that something's in front of us. So we need to take our speed and we want to adjust it down to zero, but I don't want to just set it to zero because then it would look like it stopped instantly and starts instantly when it starts going again. So instead we're going to use a linear interpolation or LERP. And we're going to take whatever the current value of speed is, and we're going to ramp it down to zero, and we're going to try 0 0.1 and see how we like how that looks. Now, if it's not colliding with something, then we want to do the reverse. We want to take our speed, and we want to ramp it back up to max speed. And we can use the same factor. So now the speed should adjust when something is in front of it. So let's try it out. Get down here in front of the tank and it should stop when it sees the Raycast hit. And it doesn't. Why is that? It's not detecting the player. Oops, enemy tank, let's see. Ah, I know what it is. So the collision mask on the Raycast is only seeing the environment. That means it doesn't detect the player or other enemies, and that's actually what we want. So we're going to set that, and that should do it. So let's go over here and try that one more time. And now if I'm in front of the enemy tank, it should 
stop moving. Right? As I back up and free up some space, it can move again. If I get out of its way, it starts going. And that's pretty good, but the problem is going to be when we have a situation at a corner. Uh, let me get ahead of the enemy tank here. And, you know, it's going to... See, it doesn't ever see me because the raycast doesn't hit it. So we can get a better result if we have instead two look-ahead raycasts. And what I'm going to do is I just duplicated it. And then we're going to take one of them and offset them, offset it up and offset the other one down. So we're going to take the transform. We're going to give it about 30 pixels in the Y direction. And the other one, we will move about minus 30 in the other direction. So now those two both stick out ahead and they're going to detect those things that are you know just right on the edge that it's going to run into on the corners and that just means we need to in our script adjust this so that it checks both so if look ahead one is colliding or look ahead two is colliding and that's just going to make it look a little better especially if we're down, for example, over here where the curvy area is where the tank's about to make some turns. Then it rotates. You see that first one is touching the player when if I was about right here, the single ray cast wouldn't be seeing me right now because it'd be going right past. So this gives it a little bit more field of view. You can do this with areas too. You could have a triangular area out in front of the player or sorry in front of the tank that detects whether something's there but this is working pretty well I think one thing I might do is so it comes to a stop and it starts going again I might change the ramp up back to speed a little bit lower so it takes a little, just a slightly longer time to get started again. So it doesn't look like it has as much acceleration. So it can slam on the brakes, but it can't accelerate back up to speed as fast. That looks better. And then if I'm going backwards, you know, it's trying to keep pace with me. Yeah, I like that. All right, I think that'll do it for this installment. In the next video, we're going to need to make these bullets start doing some damage. Now that they are hitting things, we will connect up the health of the player and the enemy and make them take damage. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments and questions below, and I'll see you in the next video.